Alright, this news article may shock a lot of people who hate the guts of Hitler and say he deserved to die from day one. A new biography of Hitler by a prominent German historian by the name of Peter Longrich is likely to stir controversy with its argument that the Nazi leader's political acumen had been underestimated and that the belief in his hypnotic grip over Germans is inflated. Well, it's not inflated, it's actually pretty accurate, because he did have a hypnotic grip over the Germans because he was such a charismatic character to them. He presented his speeches in a way that attracted many German people. Peter Longrich's Hitler, to be published on Monday, is a 1,295-page tome that includes material from the diaries of Nazi propaganda, Chief Joseph Goebbels, and early Hitler speeches. Overall, you have a picture of a dictator who controlled much more, who was more closely involved in individual decisions than previously thought. I wanted to put Hitler as a person back in the center, Longrich told Ruderson in an in an interview. Recent work on the Third Reich had placed more emphasis on the social and political climate that had led to the rise of Nazism after the defeat of World War I and crippling reparation demands. Yeah, believe it or not, during the, uh, the market crisis or whatever that, that economic downfall was, it affected not only the United States and the UK, but also Britain because it was a capitalist system at the time. Soon after World War II, Germans clung to the belief that they had been held hostage by a criminal gang led by the charismatic Hitler bent on conquering Europe and exterminating Jews, which was the case in World War II, and not many people knew of Hitler's plans until then, so... Good point. Longrich, a professor at London University, argues that while all Hitler's policies and the results were catastrophic, he acted smartly in specific situations. That is true, I'll give it to him, because the, uh, the early battles of World War II, Hitler acted smartly against the Allies, which consisted of Great Britain and everything that was not conquered by Germany and Russia you know, the German-Russian alliance that was going on between Hitler and Stalin. And Hitler would have won World War II had he known to attack the Russians during the summer when, you know, the temperature wasn't that bad and there weren't many snow flurries. Because Napoleon tried to do the same thing and look what happened. And I'll even go further back during the killing of the Jews. Now, Hitler knew that he couldn't just send the SS and every other German militia to force the Jews out of their home while people were watching because he knew that it would create a huge public uproar and everybody would try to try to dethrone him from his political power. And if you don't believe me that it would have caused a public uproar, take a look at William Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, or The End Days of Caesar, or whatever the fuck it's called. Brutus killed Julius Caesar in midday, I might add, and it caused a huge public uproar in the days afterwards. The question why he managed to get so far needs to be addressed. Obviously, he had the ability to exploit individual situations in his own interest and for his own aims, he said. I guess you have a point because, thanks to the movie Der Untergang, we see that Hitler was working on plans for his own church. Even his racial policies, which culminated in the murder of at least 6 million Jews in the Holocaust, 
were in large part down to political opportunism, says Longridge, who does not think Hitler was radically anti-Semitic at an early age. Around 1990-1920, he realized that he could be successful in politics by embracing an enticing anti-Semitism, he said, adding it became a central element only in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. Hitler's skills in taking power is even more striking given that the Austrian-born art student was a nobody with no ideology until he was only 30. Yeah, part of that, after World War I, he spent a lot of time in prison before he even made his mark as a political leader. Only then, refusing to accept Germany's defeat, was he drawn to the early Nazi party. Longridge also seeks to debunk the theory that Hitler had an irresistible charisma that captivated German, arguing that it was largely artificially constructed by the Nazi propaganda machine, which pumped out pictures of trans fans at rallies. Well, I don't know about that, so... I guess you have a point, unless somebody can provide a counter-argument to this. I'm kind of in the middle on this one. The author does not exonerate Germans, saying large parts of the population supported Hitler while others were opportunistic in following him. But he argues that there were social tensions and discontent, for example, within the church. Now, which church are we talking about? Are we talking about the, uh, the Jewish church, the uh, synagogue, or whatever it's called? Or are we... Actually, you know what? Yeah, they might be talking about the synagogues. It would be illogical to think that a deeply divided country like Germany suddenly united behind one person shared a polit one political view, Monrich said. <clears throat> no comment there. Seventy years after his death, Germans' attitudes toward Hitler are still evolving, Lonrich said. I don't think there is any enthusiasm for Hitler, but we are seeking taboos being broken, he said, citing recent films about a dictator in the debate about the publication of Mein Kampf, which, believe it or not, was actually wrote by Hitler. And it gets really, really deep into a lot of stuff that young kids shouldn't be reading. I mean, high school students will have a chance to read it, if possible. Because we all know censorship of books is still going on. Let's see, is there anything else? Ah, yes. As fears about right-wing radicalism in Germany grow due to the refugee crisis, he warns that with a rougher political atmosphere, the potential of a single political figure is a factor which should not be underestimated. That is true because Hitler, while he may have a charismatic personality and a few good points about him, he was still one of the most insane leaders of the time. There, I don't think there was an equal, unless you counted Joseph Stalin in Soviet Russia, because he killed a whole hell of a lot of Russians. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this.